Okay, let's go ahead and move on uh, to Shanghai. This is something I've been watching with a lot of interest. The city of Shanghai right now is in a dystopian, nightmarish lockdown. And it all really began in the last couple of days as food deliveries began to run out within the city. The first sign that things were not great over there was this leaked video taken from a balcony in Shanghai. We verified the translation. For those who are just listening, a drone is passing over the city, asking residents to go back into their balconies, saying, quote, please comply with COVID restrictions, control your soul's desire for freedom, do not open the window or sing, let's take a listen. Yeah, I mean, that's as control your soul's desire for freedom, Crystal. It's only gotten worse since that video came out. That was five days ago. As I was explaining earlier in the show, Chinese people do not eat the same level of processed and frozen food. So that requires consistent visits to the market and food deliveries in order to feed them. That is a massive logistical challenge. When current Shanghai city lockdown regulations say you cannot even leave your apartment door, you could used to be able to at least leave within the building to go pick up deliveries. Now, these deliveries are a total nightmare. They're either coordinated by the government about three or four orders that people are placing per day are just being canceled because of the inability to deliver. The other one is requiring a whole bunch of black market trading. Some people have access to groceries in this part of the city. They're selling them to other people in this part of the city. Wow. It's a total disaster. People are putting uh, f empty fridges out on their balconies as a symbol of protest against the government. Wow. And there's a lot of people who are running out of food. All of this is because Shanghai is totally committed to a COVID zero policy, which is that they are going to lock the city down as long as it takes in order to have zero COVID. Here's the thing. The Chinese government has put himself in a real bind, as I've explained here before. Number one, their elderly population is not even close to as vaccinated as ours. Now, the reason why is because a lot of them thought that zero COVID was going to work because with previous strains, both Delta and the original COVID, you know, lockdowns as China did, it actually did kind of work. But Omicron is so transmissible that they now have 25,000, I think, admitted cases of COVID, which means you have tens and tens of thousands, if not millions of more. This current lockdown policy just not going to work. So they have an elderly population, which is not as vaccinated. Their general population also not nearly as vaccinated. Sinopharm and Sinovac, the vaccine that they've created, is also not particularly effective against even original COVID, let alone Omicron. So they're in a real catch-22. They can either do lockdown, an ineffective one, or they've condemned a lot of their elderly population to death by emphasizing zero COVID instead of vaccination. So you put all of that together, they're obviously in a tough spot, but the population is is suffering to a degree that is really difficult to comprehend. And we are seeing extraordinary scenes out of the city of Shanghai. We're about to show you a clip of residents, millions of people sitting on their city balconies who are screaming and singing uh, for freedom from their balconies. This is gonna be in Shanghai knees, so we're only gonna play a couple of seconds for those who are just listening. But just to give you a taste, this is what it sounds like in the city at night. The guy who's speaking there is basically saying, he goes, I don't think people can hold out much longer. He says that there's tragedy. So there's some videos that are surfacing out of China this morning, Crystal, of the Chinese military, which is being deployed in the streets of Shanghai. Now, you put that all together, and this is a real dangerous situation. I don't think the Chinese government is going to back down. They've never backed down in the past. People should remember, we probably have a better idea of what's happening in Shanghai than people in Beijing and in the rest of the country, just because of the Chinese government's ability in order to crack down in the Beijing equivalent of Times Square or whatever, there were signs this morning saying, don't believe everything you see on social media and mm -hmm. do not share viral videos. So these are all being uh, put decent out advice. to the population. That's decent advice, though. Actually pretty good. <laughs> but the most dystopian one that I've seen yet 
is this policy. Let's put this up there on the screen. Health officials in Shanghai are defending the policy of separating babies and young children from their parents if they test positive for COVID-19. So they are literally taking children who are testing positive for COVID and receiving treatment in a public health center. They even say this. This is a direct quote. If the child is younger than seven, those children will receive treatment in the public health center. For older children, we will just mainly isolate them in centralized quarantine places. Some of the reports out of those quarantine places are nightmarish. Not enough food, not so bad sleeping conditions, toilets, all of that. So Sad. this is a total, I mean, it's a, it is difficult to comprehend the level of dystopian disaster. We're talking about people who are kneeling in the street as people come by and check their ID passes, who are swabbing them constantly. I mean, this is a, the full stuff of nightmares of authoritarian lockdown. Yeah, and I think the reason why it matters is obviously out of um, empathy for the people who are oh, suffering oh, there know. and are scared and the yeah. children who are being taken from their parents against yeah. their will and all of that. But I also think at the beginning of COVID, when China really cracked down mm-hmm. and they like quickly erected these hospitals and they you know forced everybody to stay in their homes and they were very very sort of stringent in what they were doing as best we could tell from here, there was almost like a um, an envy of their ability to take those sorts of super aggressive authoritarian actions. Yeah, that's right. And there was a kind of weird horseshoe between people like right-wing people who are kind of like authoritarian curious and left-wing super pro-lockdown yeah. folks right. that were kind of jealous yeah. of what was being done in China ultimately. And I think now we see the the ugly face of that. And the fact that they only focused on what is a completely unrealistic and frankly anti-scientific policy of zero COVID that has not worked in one place in the entire world rather than focusing on vaccination and making sure that especially vulnerable elderly populations, of which China has a large proportion, making sure that they were protected, you know, with the highly effective vaccines that we now have, that has led to just a an unfolding disaster of catastrophic consequences. And, you know, now it's, as you said, it's it's too late. Because even if they shifted now, okay, well, let's month. just go out and get everybody vaccinated. That takes a lot of time. And yeah. so in the meantime, you're going to have a lot of severe illness and a lot of death among an elderly population that is dramatically under-vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, I'll repeat it again. Only half of Chinese aged 80 and older are fully vaccinated against COVID. Half. And, and that's here, with Sinovac. Listen, yeah. we haven't done yeah. the greatest job in the world on vaccination here right. because of our own government's policy and a deep strain of anti-vax sentiment within the country. But our elderly population is almost 100%. Yeah, like that at least one shot. Almost 100%. So on that metric, and that was the key age group, we have done much, 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 yeah. much. Better. And those are the people who are going to die. Let's be honest. Those people have a very, way higher uh a chance of actually dying from COVID. And listen to this. Of the 264 million Chinese age over 60, 52 are yet to be fully, 52 million are yet to be fully vaccinated. That's one-sixth of the population. Yeah, you're not going to snap entire, your fingers and get that done. It's impossible. Think yeah. about it. It takes a month in order to do two doses. What are you going to do? Omicron is going to outpace this thing. It's going to burn through the entire country. And it look, we have rural hospital problems, but not even close to the level of China. So they're about to get flooded. They are going fully on the lockdown. Here's an update, actually, from an American guy who lives in Shanghai. Let's put this up there on the screen. He says, day 22 of my Shanghai lockdown. As we feared yesterday... We have new restrictions. Before, we were allowed to leave our building, but not our community to get deliveries. No more. Now we are not allowed out of our apartment door. He references how he has to don a full hazmat suit in order to go down and get some deliveries. He's a volunteer who's allowed to, like, basically go door to door. But he points it out again, which is that his situation is bad, and many of his neighbors and others, because of groceries and their inability in order to get food. I referenced this, but he says, for my family, we had three deliveries that were booked to deliver today, two group purchases of meat and seafood, and one individual purchase of soap and shampoo, 
all three were canceled. We eventually were able to get a delivery from a friend in another part of the city who had better access to groceries. There are reports out there of black market level prices for food, which means that the poor people who live in Shanghai yeah, are screwed, screwed as usual, course. and they're not able to eat and you know, gonna have to have subpar uh, nutrition for their themselves and for their kids. Who knows how long this thing is gonna last? I mean, the Chinese government, they don't back down. There, there's no way. This level of social strife, you know, everybody here would fold, no matter what. But over there, they're gonna call in the military, they are going to enforce full compliance, and we saw this in very limited instances, actually, in Wuhan. Sometimes, if a people in the building had COVID, they would just seal off the building. And if some people in there died, it was like, well, you know, so be That's it. The there price. were a lot of reports of that. And this is what full communist collectivism really looks like whenever it comes to enforcement. It's it's such a sad situation. There are 30 million people who live in Shanghai. But this is what full yeah. authoritarianism yeah, looks is, like. This is I mean, nuts. Any, I, you know, backed yeah. by any ideology. And yeah, it, again, I think there was a lot of sort of triumphalism both coming from China but also from Western observers looking at what they were able to do and say, I wish we had that. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Listen, I mean, we've got a long way to go to have a real true democracy here, but at least the say of the people means something. Oh, yeah. And I will take that and all of the strife and the messiness that that entails on a daily basis over drones circling overhead, ch chastising you for your soul, <laughs> wanting freedom. Hey guys, we're gonna to be totally upfront with you. This is the most perilous time that we have ever operated in. It is so difficult just to try to sort through the news, but even more importantly, to bring you accurate information as this wave of lockdown and censorship spreads across the nation. Yeah, look, if you can become a premium subscriber today at breakingpoints.com, you're gonna help us build out a vibrant, independent media ecosystem which is free of mainstream pressure. We can't tell you how important that is at a time like this. Yep, that's right. Go to breakingpoints.com to subscribe. We love you guys and we appreciate you so much.